Hi, and welcome to this Thursday edition of Focal Point on AFR Talk. Brian Fisher is my name, your congenial, convivial, and amiable, as always, host. Great to have you in the conversation and along for the ride today. Welcome aboard the USS Focal Point. It is our patrol boat in which we patrol the choppy waters of America's public life, looking for the coordinates where truth intersects with politics. Here's your catastrophic global warming update for the day. Christopher Moncton writing today that there has been, looking at uh, reproducing charts here from the authoritative source for temperatures from around the globe. This is a quote. There has been no statistically significant warming in 17 years and four months. No global warming, 17 years and four months. Now, I want to share some thoughts with you from the scriptures about marriage, about family, about work, and about prayer in the few minutes we have, and then we'll go to prayer for ourselves and for our nation. Now, Paul talks in the section of the scripture I'm looking at today about the marriage relationship. He says, wives, submit to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. There it is, black and white. I didn't write it. I'm not responsible for it. If I was writing these rules, maybe I would say something different. But this is the authoritative word of God. Wives, submit to your husbands, for this is fitting in the Lord. Now, a couple of things to observe about this. The word submit, number one, it's voluntary. This is a decision that is between a wife and the Lord. This is not really ultimately between a wife and her husband. Whether she decides to obey the scriptures, that's between her and God. There's no verse in the Bible, and I'll tell this to couples when I did premarital counseling. I'd say to the guy, look, there's no verse in the Bible that tells you to force your wife or make your wife submit. This is an issue that's between her and the Lord. This is a gift that a godly woman offers to her husband. And the word submit means to arrange oneself under something else. So a godly wife makes a decision voluntarily out of her reverence for the Lord to arrange herself under the leadership, the headship of her husband, not because he forces her to, not because he makes her to, but because she willingly, voluntarily chooses to do it out of obedience and reverence for her ultimate Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, says to husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. So the responsibility that husbands are giving is to love our wives, as Paul says in Ephesians 5, as Christ loved the church. That is, means we are to be willing to lay down our lives for our wives. Another way to look at this is when Paul says to husbands, you are to love your wives He's saying this is how you submit to your wife. Paul made it very clear in Ephesians 5 that a biblical marriage is a relationship of mutual submission. There is a way in which a wife submits herself to her husband, and that is she voluntarily arranges herself under his headship and leadership. She supports him. She honors him. She's willing to defer to him if they cannot come to an agreement on an important decision. But the way the husband submits to his wife is by giving up his life for her, not by giving up his headship, but by making a decision to refuse ever to use his headship, to use his authority, simply to get his own way or as a cover or as a cloak for his own selfishness and not to be harsh with him. I want you to think about this for a moment, about the difference between Christianity and Islam. It just blows completely out of the tub this whole myth of multiculturalism, that all religions are equally valid. Here is an explicit statement of the word of God to husbands under Jesus Christ. Husbands, do not be harsh with your wives. There's to be tenderness. There is to be respect. There is to be honor. There is to be a commitment to use our strength to protect and provide for our wives. What does Islam teach in contrast? Islam actually teaches husbands to beat their wives if they're rebellious. There are even entire sermons on how husbands are to beat their wives, what the rules are for husbands beating their wives, literally, into submission. 
In fact, one of the major Islamic groups in Egypt just reproduced, just broadcast, rebroadcast a sermon from an imam. It's, it's dated back to 2002, but in 2002 it was aired in Arabic. They translated it into English and rebroadcast it here just recently. And it's an entire sermon on how husbands are to beat their wives into submission. What does the Bible say in contrast? What does Christianity say in contrast? Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. So if you want to know whether Christianity is superior to Islam, there it is right there in one nugget. Islam, husbands, beat your wives. Christianity, husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Now there's directions here. For the family, children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Now children are those that are still under the roof of their parents and are still dependent upon their parents for support. So at least until they graduate high school, at the very minimum, this command applies. If you are a son or a daughter at home, you have a responsibility to obey your parents. Now the word obey comes from two words in Greek, one of which means to hear and the second of which to mean to be under. So you are to hear under your parents. That is, you are to listen to them, and you are to arrange yourself under what you hear from them. Now, there's a word for fathers. Fathers, do not provoke your children, lest they become discouraged. Now, by provoking, I think, again, what Paul is saying, look, dads, do not be hard on your kids. Don't be harsh with them. Don't provoke them. Uh, uh, don't berate them, encourage them. You need to discipline them. You need to correct them. You need to guide them. There are going to be times when you're going to need to say no to them, but don't provoke them because this will discourage them. If nothing's ever good enough, if they grow up never believing that you love them, that you're committed to them, that you are proud of them, they can become discouraged. So be sure that you're, there's two things that my dad, I always knew about my dad. My dad wasn't a perfect dad. But there are two things I always knew about my father. I knew that he loved me, and I knew that he was proud of me. And I think if you were to ask my son today, he's 30 years old. I just told him last week, he just finished a master's program. He's starting his career, and I just told him how proud I was of him, uh, how much I loved him, how proud I was of him for the life choices he was making. He made a great choice for a life partner uh, in his wife, and how proud I was of him, how gratifying it was for me as a father to see him reach this milestone place in his life. So husbands, love your children. Don't provoke them. Let them know you're proud of them and that you love them. Now, there's a lot of other information here in this chapter we're not going to have time to get into. Maybe we can touch a little bit of it tomorrow, but I want to be sure that we preserve some time to pray. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I pray this day for myself, for my wife and my family for the listening audience of Focal Point and AFR Talk, for President Obama and all of our elected officials, for every man, woman, and child in the United States. And I pray for every marriage that is represented among us. I pray that each wife will submit to her husband as is fitting in you. May each husband love his wife and not be harsh with her or be embittered against her in any way. I pray that the children in every home will obey their parents in everything because it pleases you. I pray that fathers will not embitter their children so that they do not become discouraged. Amen.